Welcome to the Link Sports Show. I'm Daniel Kahn, and joining me this evening are Link Sport reporters James Williams and Sam Hewitt. As you can see, James is wearing a Manchester United top, and he's there to explain why, aren't you, James? Yes. Well, basically, we had a little agreement. I was so convinced that Tottenham, as a Spurs fan, of course, weren't going to lose to Manchester United at the weekend, but obviously they did. And the agreement was that if Spurs lost at the weekend, I'd wear Dan's Man United shirt. So, true to my word, here I am in the United shirt. <laughs> we move on. <laughs> let's move on. And let's talk Lincoln City. Um, they have had a 10-day rest. Well, they will have had a 10-day rest before they take on Tranmere at Central Bank this Saturday. In response, Danny Cowley believes the break came at the right time for his side. Now, we are, we're, we're pretty healthy at the moment. Um, as you alluded to at the beginning, we've, 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 been, we've, we've now been well, near on 10, 10, 11 days without a game, which I think has come at a good time, actually, um, we can bemoan the fact that, that we didn't play last weekend. But it, was, um, it probably came at a good time. It gave us a chance to, to freshen up physically and mentally. Um, which is always important. It's always we're always trying to find the balance between fitness and freshness, and um, we're hoping we'll have a really fresh group come Saturday. Cali also believes Tranmere will pose a different threat to when they played them earlier this season. They are um, obviously they've got a new management team, um, and they're playing in a slightly different style now, um, with slightly different personnel. So I think that there is there may be some advantage of the fact that um, that the that, that we might know them a little bit better than they know us. Um, but we're, we're obviously really respectful of Mickey Mellon and uh, Michael Jackson now. Um, yeah, they've, had, they've had very successful managerial careers, obviously. Won this division at Fleetwood, then, then we were successful at, at Shrewsbury as well, being, being promoted out of, out of League 2 with Shrewsbury. So um, we're, we're very respectful of, of, of them as managers and, and obviously they've, they've done well. Um, in the time that they've been there, I think they're, they're 11 unbeaten at the moment. So we're, we, we understand what's in, what, what the proposition is in front of us. Tranmere have, have some fantastic players, some football league quality and, and boys that can change the game in, in, in a moment. So um, we're understanding of that, but we're, um, we've, we've had a good look at them. We're, 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 clear of, we're, we're clear of where their strengths lie. Um, and, and it's a game that, that, that we're certainly looking forward to playing. So James, looking ahead to that Tranmere game, it will be around 13 to 14 days that Lincoln would have had a rest. I mean, it could either be very good for them, they'll be refreshed, or they might not be match fit. It's a difficult one, to be honest. I don't think there'll be a worry about match fitness as such, because they've played so many games that I think their fitness is at a very good level, the Lincoln City players. I think the worry is that maybe the momentum that the Lincoln City team has after that Oldham victory and after going top the week before when they played Wrexham, has just been interrupted by that Shaw Lane game getting postponed last weekend, and they've had this break now. However, saying that, it could work out to be a good thing. There were a few niggles, injuries in the squad, Nathan Arnold, Harry Anderson, to name a couple there with a few injuries. So it's given them a chance to refresh and go again now with this. It's a massive match against Tranmere now, isn't it? And Sam, I mean, it's a top of the table class, first and second. Do you think this result could kind of, um, kind of format Lincoln's season in a way? Could it be the result that means a lot for the rest of the season. Yeah, of course. I think if Lincoln can overcome Tranmere this weekend, they could pull away, because Link Lincoln Tranmere is a big game. Tranmere are a big side uh, in this league, and I think if they can beat them, they've got a, a decent run of a few winnable games from there. Uh, they, can climb, they can keep climbing, keep getting away, and I think it should be an easy straight run from there, hopefully, anyway. And James, we were at the press conference today, and Cali seemed quite excited with all these games coming up, didn't he? You know, when they do play uh, Nunwich in the FA Trophy. They have that postponed game in the league with Solihull as well. I mean, he, he kind of took that challenge on, didn't he? Well, he loves his football, doesn't he, Danny Cowley? He said at the press conference that the weekend didn't feel normal when there was no football. It didn't feel like a weekend. So he's definitely missed it. Uh, <laughs> whether his players have or not, maybe they've enjoyed the break. But, yeah, uh, he embraces these games, doesn't he? He was asked about a winter break as well. And he laughed off the suggestion. You know, he loves football around the festive period and going into January. And it's, it's a big month, January as well. Next month, you know, is a big month. There's mm -hmm. a, the Ipswich match in the FA Cup. There could be then a possible trip away to Gateshead in the FA Trophy if Lincoln beat Nantwich. And then there's matches against Dover and Barrow, which are both on the television as well at the end of January. You know, 
the next two months could define where Lincoln's season go, whether I think they'll finish in the playoffs, whatever, but it could define whether they finish in the playoffs or whether they challenge for that top spot. Well, winger Nathan Arnold was promoted from the National League with Grimsby Town last season. He says the current Imps squad is better than Grimsby's was last season and that the Imps are doing all the right things. Uh, right up there, yeah, I must say, right up there. Um, I think at Grimsby last season when we got promoted, uh, I think the highest place was third all season. So to actually reach top spot <clears throat> twice this season and obviously can go top again Saturday. Um, I'd say, yeah, it's right up there. The, the collective, uh, the team, cohesion, um, and the spirit and togetherness is uh, second to none. And uh, it's probably the, the best squad that I've been a part of uh, on a collective. And uh, we're in a good place at the minute. So, James, how impressed have you been by Nathan Arnold this season? He's been a big player for Lincoln this season, Nathan Arnold. I think some people maybe don't value just how good a player he's been. He goes under the radar when you've got the likes of Matt Reed, Theo Robinson, scoring the goals. But Nathan Arnold has scored some vital goals when Robinson or Reed haven't been scoring. It's, it's Arnold that has popped up with the goals. And that's what you need from players that aren't playing up front, the players on the wing and in midfield. They need to chip in, and that's exactly what Nathan Arnold does. And Sam, he, Nathan Arnold's now 29. Yeah. How vital is that experience? He's been promoted he, with Grimsby as well. So he's how very important? experienced at this level, which is just what Danny Cowley needs. He needs someone who's been there, done that before with another team. Uh, he's got him and he's proved to be a vital player this season. And I think he doesn't get credited as much as Matt Reed and Theo Robinson does up front just because he plays behind. But he's been arguably their biggest player. I think it is a clever signing by Danny Cowley. He's done that with a, f a few players made players that have got experience of getting promoted but also challenging for promotion in this league. Alex Woodyard, Sam Habergham last year challenged with Braintree. So they've got also got players that have experience of playing in the playoffs and seeing a fight for the playoffs mm. through until the end of the season. So they, they know what's in store a lot of this squad now. And Lincoln have quite a lot of, kind of depth in those wide positions, don't they, in terms of Harry Anderson, Terry Hawkridge, Nathan Arnold, and possibly Jack Muldoon can play out wide as well. So how important do you think that could be? Well, with the high-intensity game that Lincoln play, Cowley was saying it today, that you need players to come off the bench and freshen up the side during a match and add something. And players like Muldoon, Anderson to come off the bench, or if it's Muldoon and Hawkridge coming off the bench, they make a big difference to that Lincoln side and inject some more creativity and some more pace. And that's maybe what Lincoln didn't have last season didn't have those options off the bench, but Cowney has formed a squad here which the first 11 is strong and the bench is strong, and that is the difference this season. It's, well, a, it's a lot quicker team this season. Uh, the signing of Nathan Arnold, it just adds that, that speed down the right or left-hand side, whichever side he plays. And Theo Robinson, he were, it's the same as when he was at Derby, when he was at Doncaster Rovers. He came off the bench, or if he started, he can get in behind, and that's vital for Reed. To, to really and, play his best. And just finally, let's talk about on Saturday. Oh, do we do we fancy a Lincoln City win? Do we try that? I think it's it, it's not going to be <laughs> easy, uh, and it, it's a difficult one because we don't really know. But where Lincoln Tramier City are unbeaten in so many games. I know, but it's it's going to be tough. It's not going to be an easy match. I I would back Lincoln. Yes, being at home, if the crowd turns out like it did against Oldham, yes, I would put money on Lincoln. But judging by the way I go in predicting <laughs> football matches, it's not anything to go by. Uh, it's, it's a huge game. I, I do think all good things must come to an end. I think this run, I think just because we've had this long break, I think Cowley has to be careful <laughs> how, he plays this, how he plays this game. I, and look, finally, James, we need to move on. But No, well, I just want to say last that... Word, last word, last word. I, I seem probably a bit negative there. What I'm saying is still be very positive. There's a great chance Lincoln can win, but it is not going to be I easy. Mean, you talk about runs, but Tranmere are also 11 games of meeting, so maybe it's their run that might come to an end. Yeah. We'll have to see how they get on uh, on Saturday. Lincoln United continued their rise up the Evo Stick First Division South with a 2-0 win at home to Chase Town on Tuesday evening. The Whites are now 13th and on a seven-game unbeaten run in the league. Manager Sam Wilkinson was pleased to get the win, but thought his side didn't perform to their potential. Great to get the three points. Not really too happy with their performance, but um, you know, if you're not playing to your best and you can win, that would, you know, it's obviously good. 
Uh, we didn't play with the tempo we have done for the last three or four. We thought we thought we made it a little bit too easy for them first half to pass it around and get a bit of a foothold in the game. Um, so we you know we addressed that at half time and we put it right. I thought second half we you know was the better side and we deserved it. Without being great, I thought we just shaded the second half. You know, don't get me wrong, it's a great result. You know, two 0 clean sheet. Um, we just our standards were set a few weeks back a little bit higher. You know, so we want to we want to get to them standards again. So James, you were there uh, on Tuesday at Ashby Avenue. How impressed were you by that white side? Well, I think Sam Wilkinson said it there. They weren't at their best, and that was true. Probably Chase Town had the better of the game before Lincoln took the lead in that second half. But I was impressed with the way Lincoln hung in there at times. He showed good character, resilience. They've certainly added that to their game over the past few weeks, resilience. They were conceding goals earlier on this season, whereas now they are a lot stronger at the back. And yeah, they showed their clinical instincts when Cotton and Hempen still got the goals. And a good job done, I think. Sam, you were there as well. I mean, how impressed were you? Let, let's go through the goals. Matt Cotton opened the uh, score. Matt Cotton, uh, well, his goal was, I thought it was brilliant. Um, he, the corner came in, Chase Town failed to clear, really. And Cotton, he, he acrobatically, really, struck in the top corner for the volley. And then... And the Hempenstall's goal was absolutely yeah. fantastic, wasn't it? That <laughs> shit, where did that come from? Nowhere, quite literally, out of nothing. Hempenstall just gets the ball on the left-hand side yeah. and just chips it over the keeper's head from about 40 yards out. It caught everyone out, you know, including me. I was filming it and it caught I me was, out. I was writing as well. I, <laughs> think, I, think, I don't even think anyone saw it. Well, I think some people weren't even like, concentrating on the match and then someone said, it's going in, and everyone looked <laughs> up and saw the ball float into the back of the net. It was, it was an outstanding I mean, goal. How impressed have you been by Jordan Hempenstall this season? After Jack McGovern, who left, to Gainsborough. I mean, he's stepped into his shoes fantastically, hasn't he? He has, and it, he has just a knack for being in the right place at the right time and scoring, well, scoring fantastic goals. Scoring like fantastic that. goals at important times. And Lincoln United needed that second goal in that game because Chase Town did look like they, they might grab an equaliser. So it was a big goal at a big time, and he's becoming a very, very big player for Lincoln United. And Sam, do you think playoffs? Aspirations are real goals well, for the right now, the, side? the table is pretty much lying to you because they've got so many games in hand. I think it's about seven or eight on, on one or two teams. Uh, if they can get a run going like they are at the minute, they, they could be up there. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. It, I mean, I'm, I was looking at the table just there, 13th at the moment, but that doesn't tell the true story. And the run they're on, there's a real belief growing that they can challenge for the playoffs again. A lot of that squad did it last year. Now they're bolstered by the confidence that they've taken from a good run in the FA Cup and a good run in the FA Trophy. I don't see any reason why they can't be up there again come what, the end of this season. And, this was, season? and what was so impressive um, on Tuesday night as well, they didn't really play well, but Sam Wilkinson has got it into his players that if you don't play well, make sure you're solid at the back and then the chances will come. And the, chan well, the chances didn't come for that second one, that was out of nothing. <laughs> but uh, they, they managed to win ugly on Tuesday, yeah. and that's important if you want to be up there, and I think they will be. Well, we'll see how they go on on Saturday. Uh, Link United also travelled to the bottom of the tail rugby town this Saturday, uh, but Wilkinson thinks it'll be a tough match. They are at the bottom at the minute, but they have picked up of late, so it's still not going to be an easy game. It's um, going to be a nice surface, you know, nice ground to, to go and play, so I fully expect us to get the results. So, James, uh, rugby town? Uh, it's not going to be an easy game, is it? No, bottom of the league, you know, would suggest that it, Lincoln United should be of should course, win comfortably. But, but rugby have won two of the last three now. Uh, one of them was against Newcastle Town, who were second in the division. So I don't think Sam Wilkinson will be underestimating rugby. Also, mm -hmm. a point I should make is Lincoln have won one game in the league away from I mean, home yeah, their season. away form isn't the best, no, is it? No, it's not. I mean, they've only lost two away at the same time, but, but they're not getting the wins away from home. And if you're going to go to a team at the bottom of the table, away from home, yeah. you've got to be winning that. And Sam, Sam, how do they change that away form? What, what do you think they need to do I when they travel? I think they need to do what they're doing at home. If they're, if they're not playing well, they need to be solid at the back. They need to make sure they're getting clean sheets. I mean, they, they might not have won many games, but they've got plenty of draws. They know what they're doing at the back, uh, and, and they're getting points proof of that. What they need to do is find a way of getting the best out of Hempenstall uh, or anyone else to try and nick a goal or two. Uh, at important times in the away matches because they need them with eyes that they won't get up there. Well, hopefully they'll have another win hopefully, against yeah. uh, rugby and address that away form. Uh, it's the Sports Personality Awards on Sunday in national news and um, we'll be seeing who's won in Birmingham. Andy Murray's the favourite to win, meaning he can retain his title 
and win for the third time in four years. Gentlemen, let's talk about Sports Personality Awards. Um, who, although Murray is the favourite, who would be your pick from a fantastic year in British sport? I don't think you can look past Murray. No? Um, I think we have, of the talk, Olympians? we have to talk as if Murray's not there, because I think Murray <laughs> is going to win. Okay, I okay, think. you're right. Let's Murray's just spin, out of it. Let's spin <laughs> Murray for a minute. He's been it's fantastic. Harsh. <laughs> but let's talk. Who else has been outstanding this season? I mean, this year, sorry. Well, you've got... And we I mean, had a summer of Olympics, let's not forget. We did, yes. I mean, Euro 2016 yeah, as well. <laughs> Wales won in the Euros. I'm a big fan of Gareth Bale, and I think he should be up there if it wasn't for Andy Murray. Well, I get that. I no, because you've got Jamie Vardy on that list as well. Jamie Vardy, you know, won the league yeah, with Leicester yeah. City and was a big player. In but there were also 10 Leicester. other players there Exactly. As well. But Vardy was a so big possibly part team of, of the year. Team of the year, Leicester City. Year, well, I don't, think, I don't think you can look past Leicester City unless you take Team GB yeah. and Paralympics GB. But about but sports personality. If we're looking at personality... I mean, is it about personality anymore, though? Well, I think it's called personality, but it means sports person of the yeah. year. That, that's really what it is. And that person, I'm, I'm sorry, it's Andy Murray. You He's won. No, you Andy can't. Can I, can, I, can I just throw something around, though? I know we... OK, yeah, Murray's probably going to win. However, Chris Froome... Won the Tour de France, again, dominated cycling's most prized possession, and he didn't even make the shortlist. It, it's, been, it's been a very tough year to pick because there's been so much sporting achievement in this country. But the point I'm making as to why Murray is so far ahead is he reached the final of the French Open, he won Wimbledon, he then won Olympic gold, he finished the year world number one and won the ATP season-ending finals, that is so many achievements for I, one year. I understand because that. Because you're, 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 you're saying to me that Olympic gold medalists are on that list. Yeah, who Murray, have worked for four years for a goal, and they, some of them achieved their gold. I completely gold. understand that, but Andy Murray also won Olympic gold and Wimbledon and in, ended the year world number one. And to defeat someone like Novak Djokovic and take his top spot, that, that I'm sorry, is the, Sam, the biggest Sam, any more honourable mentions? I think we're, we're arguing about this, but at the end of the day, it's, it's all part of a, a brilliant year for Great Britain, for England, for, for everyone involved in every sport. We've no, had I mean, a I wouldn't go year. as far as every sport. I don't think the football most, team most has been sports. fantastic. Uh, well, even the summer. football teams, not England, but the Premier League, what a season last season was. And Leicester out of nowhere won the league. I mean, in, across the sports, I mean, you've got Murray in the tennis, at the Olympics, I mean, we had a whole range of medals across sports that you wouldn't think would get a medal in. So I think it's only a celebration that some people didn't make the shortlist because there's so much talent this year as we've achieved. So. Well, I think we should end it on that. What a fantastic <laughs> line uh, that was. Unfortunately, that's all time. Oh, excuse me. We've got time for this week. Thank you to James and Sam for joining me. Uh, don't forget to keep up to date with all the latest sports news in Lincoln by following us on Twitter at LinkSport. Let us know what you thought about the show from all of us on the Link Sports team. Have a very Merry Christmas and a lovely Happy New Year. We'll be back in January. Goodbye.